let us pray for the indwelling of the holy spirit pray together our father who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy your name, name thy your kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven, in heaven. give yeah. us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen let's all be seated hallelujah 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 now we are going to listen about prayer life the way jesus prayed in his life that is the best example in front of us when we think about prayer life because jesus has given us very good example of prayer we find jesus many times in the bible especially in new testament we find jesus many times he is found praying to the lord his father hallelujah hallelujah am i clear we find jesus many times so there is a word of god in luke gospel of luke chapter 11 word of god one on words their disciples came to jesus and asked them jesus teach us how to pray teach us also how to pray as the john's disciples they were taught by john how to pray you also teach us how to pray say hallelujah hallelujah do you want to study how to pray do you want to learn how to pray hallelujah so jesus disciple asked jesus teach us how to pray did jesus teach them how to pray that is one question why why they did not ask jesus you teach us how to do miracles get me jesus you teach us how to do miracles you teach us jesus how to heal the sick how to raise the dead they did not ask anything of those sign those kind or how to multiply the bread when we pray 10 loaves can become 1000 5000 millions you teach us how to do the miracles they did not ask such thing why because in jesus they saw more than miracles more than any other wonders that jesus walked what they could find best in jesus life that was his prayer life say hallelujah hallelujah so they saw in jesus life what is best in his life the prayer life of jesus that's what they saw in his life the best so they asked for the best thing in jesus life that was prayer life jesus disciples they went and asked you teach us how to pray so jesus prayer was so beautiful jesus prayer was, prayer was so nice so they heard it so they also wanted that best thing in jesus life what do you ask from jesus what we ask from jesus jesus i need a good life partner i need a good car i need a good house see these are all human needs isn't it all these are our human needs jesus i need to study very well jesus i need very good memory how many of us have asked jesus jesus i need to pray like as you like you pray not many of us have, might have asked jesus jesus i also want to pray as you pray hallelujah hallelujah are we together so jesus disciples they asked from jesus what was best in his life so beautiful in his life that was his prayer life that is why they told him asked him jesus you teach us how to pray jesus did not teach them how to pray but jesus told them when you pray you pray like this okay so jesus gave a very good prayer.
prayer. Let us stop there, but let us go to um, a word of God in Psalm 144, word of God, one. Let us see what does it say. 144, word of God, one. It is written like this. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers, my fingers for battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can we explain this word of God? How do we do war with hands? You mean, uh, usually we take weapons and fight, isn't it? But for Jesus, how do we do war with hands? Nothing else. Raise your hands. This is the way you do war for Christ. You understand? Hallelujah. Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand, please. Jesus, we are going to do war with hands. Hallelujah. 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 When you raise your hands before Lord and say, Jesus, I praise you, I thank you, I adore you. You are doing that war for God against evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is doing war with hands. Everyone understood? All right. Keep down. How do you do the battle with fingers? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Do you have rosary in your hand? Do you have rosaries in your hand? Yes. Take it. Take the rosary in your hand. When you pass, when you pass your fingers through each decay, each bead, what do you do? What do you do? You are battle with fingers. Hallelujah. 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 You take the rosary, please. Let Jesus see that you have rosary. Okay, raise your rosary. Pray after me. Pray together. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace. grace. The, Lord the Lord is with you. you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now you know how to do war with hands yes. and how to battle with the fingers. Yes. Are we together? Yes. This is the way we do war with hands, not fighting with people with hands. No, that is not the fight of Jesus. Jesus always fights with the word of God. Even Satan, when he came to tempt Jesus, Jesus used word of God from Bible. From Bible, he took the word of God. He took from Deuteronomy, he took the word of God and he told, no, human beings are not, uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, lived only by, not only by bread, but from uh, the word of God, from God. The food from God. Hallelujah. 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 So these are the two things. When we do war with hands, raise your hand. If you have enemies, raise your hand and pray to the Lord. God will fight for you. Take your rosary and do battle for, uh, against your enemies. Praying rosary for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the way we do war with hands and war with battle with fingers. I think that is clear. That is one way of prayer. Then, again, um, can you just clap your hands? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, when we clap our hands, when we are before the Lord, we are praising God. We are very happy. That is why I clapped hands and praise, or I clap hands and praise God. Because I am very happy. And I am praying before the Lord. One way, of, one way of praying to the Lord, clapping our hands. Uh, this, 
the word of god is very clear the psalmist also says to us clap your hands psalm 47:1 we used to when we say we used to clap our hands and we have usually we have the wiggle gele isn't it clapping your hands that is that is the way of praising god but simply when we clap that is also a way of prayer but there is another way of clapping how do we clap together with the songs together with the rhythm okay for example there is a song okay can you clap with the rhythm can you clap with the rhythm every that means everyone goes together clapping so there is a rhythm in it there is a rhythm in it so clapping your hands there are two ways of clapping your hands without rhythm and with a rhythm or with music so um clapping your hands with rhythm and singing together with that rhythm of clapping we are praising god we are adoring god hallelujah these are different ways of praying before the lord today when we look into our life we find many people to us sometimes when we find maybe for example in the compound of our house if you find anything for example uh if you find a neck of a uh, uh, cock or uh, some uh, chicken eggs are buried in a certain place of your compound and you you will know that there is somebody who entered in your compound and they tried to do something isn't it hallelujah there are different things that they do which doctors we fear we fear automatically the fear comes what is what is opposite of belief the word believe opposite of it unbelief isn't it opposite of faith mistrust hallelujah hallelujah there are many people they have fear they have fear hallelujah so jesus is so powerful the word of god is so powerful a single verse when we start reading the bible with faith trusting the lord the fear that we have will be removed and when we complete that word of god completely god will fill us with love with faith so half of the verse is enough to remove fear from us you need to know that so you get used with this book you if you get used with this book it will remove fear from our life and it will increase faith in us hallelujah hallelujah every day you start reading bible god will definitely increase your faith hallelujah jesus disciples they went and told him teachers how to pray jesus gave them a beautiful prayer jesus gave them a beautiful prayer i don't want to look at that prayer but what happened afterwards that's what i need to um i need to you to look at because after the prayer jesus gave a very good example not example an incident a story about perseverance in prayer word of god in chapter uh, luke chapter 11 beginning we read about the prayer that jesus taught them then afterwards from five onwards verse five onwards we find a story there jesus gives a story of a person who had a friend so he he got a guest he got a guest at home the word of god is like this suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight listen to uh, listen the word of god and you get the word of god very well and the story also that's what we are going to think now meditate on suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him friend let me let me uh, lent me sorry lent me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has come 
A friend of mine has come and I don't have anything to give. Have you, have you heard of this incident? Have you heard of this incident? Everyone, you are familiar with this incident, isn't it? Who is the author of this story? Jesus. Jesus is the author of this story. Jesus himself made this story to tell his disciples how you need to pray and what to pray and to whom you pray. That's why he wanted to explain how to pray. To whom and what time you pray. Jesus wanted to tell them all these things. That is why uh, he, used, uh, he, he used this beautiful story uh, of a person had a friend. Story is saying to us, a person, suppose one of you, one of us, do you have friends? Um, how many of you have friends whom you can, whom you can go at any time, in any, any time, even without calling, even without saying that I'm coming? Do you have such friends? You can go to that person any time. You trust that person so much. That is what here it is written. Suppose one of you has a friend and at midnight you are going to that person. That's what Jesus is saying. At midnight you are going to that person and saying, get up, give me three loaves of bread because a guest has arrived at my home. At what time? That's another thing. The guest came at midnight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is very rare that we get guests at midnight. We don't, we don't entertain guests to come at midnight. Is it? It's not secure. It's not so good to come at midnight and disturb people. Okay, if it is 10 o'clock, it's okay, fine. 9, 10, that time is okay, fine. But still, it is late. But if that guest comes at 12 o'clock, at night, one, two, it's very hard. Very hard to accept that, that thing. And without saying, that's another thing. Without saying, without informing that guest, guest comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, this is what your life is. This is what our life is. Anything can happen anytime. Hallelujah. Anything can happen anytime. There is a corner there. When you go there, and when you, before you take the corner, you do not know what is on the corner. Is it? You have no idea. You have no idea. Maybe, some, maybe a person is there with a panga. No idea. Maybe you are there at 7 o'clock, you are driving somewhere. You won't go to the airport to pick somebody. Maybe when you reach Mombasa Road, you have no idea on the turning to the airport. We do not know what is there. Are we together? Everyone's life is like that. Eh? We have no idea. Let's say you are just maybe going to the uh, washroom barefooted. And uh, there was a thorn in, uh, on the way. You did not see it. You just stepped on it. You did not see it. It just happened. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The moment that you don't expect, the moment that you don't expect, things can happen in your life that you never expect that it can take place in your life. That is what our life is. So there are so many things, good things, hard things, sad things, things which we cannot even uh, think of it, we cannot even receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are parents. There are parents who used to complain. Let's say, I have heard some stories of some parents. They used to say that, Father, we used to pray. But even then, that thing happened to us. Why us? Why God has chosen us? We were praying that time. Why God did not, why God did not listen to our prayer? Why God didn't take away that accident of my child, my boy, my girl? We were praying. 
We were, we were praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what happens in our life. Unexpectedly, anything can come. The guest came at midnight without informing. This is what our life. So Jesus is saying, what is the first condition? You need to know. First condition of prayer, let's say. Uh, you need to know anything can happen in your life anytime. So what do you do? Pray. Always be in prayer. Even if Jesus is with us, thing, wrong things can happen in our life. Very clear. From the incident, Jesus was, walk, Jesus was together with his disciples when they were um, on the boat. The storm came. Without informing, the storm came. Even Jesus was there. So what does that mean? Even if Jesus is with us, hard things can happen in our life. So always, always be on prayer. Don't leave your prayer life because we have no idea on the corner of my life, tomorrow of my life, what is there. I have no idea. Only God knows. Only God knows. So we are, we are praying or we let us pray every day. Because we have no idea next moment what will happen. Second thing, look into the story again. Look into the uh, story. When the guest came, hallelujah, give a mighty clap to the Lord. Again, let us go to the story. The guest comes at midnight, then this person this person, what does he do? He was not surprised. What did he do? He ran to his friend, whom he can go at any time and relay. That is why he went to his friend at midnight, asking, lend me three loaves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lend me three loaves of bread because I have a guest at home. I don't have anything to give him. What is the meaning of it? He was not surprised. I, he did not fear. He did not ask the guest, why did you come this time? He did not say, I don't have anything to give you. He did not say that. He was so free. He just welcome, welcome. Come in. Feel at home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But inside, he knew there is nothing. But he knew, if I go to a person, I will get something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is that? Who is that person? Waiting for you any, for any time? Hallelujah. You know it. You know it. You have said. Who is that? Jesus, say hallelujah, hallelujah. To reach Jesus, to approach Jesus, my brothers and sisters, you don't want this white cloth. Let's say you don't need this white cloth to go near to the Jesus. Do you need this white cloth? You don't need, you don't need, let's say, um, virtues in your life to go near to Jesus. You don't need any kind of recommendation. Do you need any kind of recommendation? To go to Jesus? You don't need any kind of recommendation. You don't need any kind of appointment to go to Jesus. He's the best friend for us. Best friend of me and you is Jesus. Anytime I can go. Midnight, no problem. Jesus welcomes. Come. You come. I am here. You come to me. Hallelujah. Is Jesus your friend? Now you know that you can approach him anytime. You don't need any kind of um, appointment. You don't need any kind of uh, token. For example, if you want to go and see a doctor, you have to take appointment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But to reach Jesus, to approach Jesus, we don't need 
we don't need money money we don't want anything you just go any time you want any time you are welcomed hallelujah 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 but come to jesus you don't need any kind of appointment he is there for you and he is not surprised when you come to him he is not surprised because he is always welcoming us hallelujah 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 are you happy are you happy so jesus is there um jesus always went to his father he always prayed to his father the word father jesus when he began his life he used that word when he we find jesus in the bible talking um with his parents we find him when he was when he was lost in the temple when he was found on the third day in jerusalem temple when his mother asked him why did you do to us like this isn't it why did you do this to us then what did he say don't you know that i have to do my father's will are we together so jesus started with father and he jesus ended how did he end his life saying what father father i give my soul into your hands hallelujah jesus started and jesus entered his life with father he had a special relationship with his father especially in prayer that's what we need special relationship with jesus and you need to know any time i can come to him he doesn't reject me any time he doesn't look what i am or who am i who am i whether i am a sinner what kind of sin that i have done in my life he doesn't mind he doesn't mind but what is important he is looking whether i am coming or not that's why jesus is not calling you sinner jesus will not call you sinner if you have the desire to come back to the lord if you have the desire even if you have done all kinds of sins in the world if you have the desire to come back to the lord jesus will never call you a sinner rather he will call you a saint say hallelujah he will call you saint sinner is one who finds always happiness in sin he doesn't want to he doesn't want to come back such a person is called a sinner person who wants to continue in sin continue find happiness in sin doesn't want to come back to god such people god will call sinner or sinners if you have the desire that is enough if you have the desire to come back to me that is enough jesus will call you saint not a sinner so you are a sinner or a saint are you saints hallelujah give a mighty clap to the lord which is the word jesus used many times in bible from his own lips which is the word it is father that is the word he used in uh, uh, jesus used many times from his own lips that is the word he used most of the times or the, the word he used uh, most he used a uh, word father he used many times many times in bible so second thing for our prayer life to know that my god is over always a welcoming god he doesn't reject me and he is my father jesus is my father that uh, i need to have that understanding jesus is my father jesus is my father if i see jesus as my father then i can approach him any time can you approach your parents any time or they have told you uh you know after 10 o'clock don't come and knock on our door have they told you like that is there something like that anyway in my home it is not like that i can go and call my parents any time i feel you are also same like me isn't it feel it same 
if you find Jesus as your father, you will feel same. So see Jesus as your father, then you will feel that he, in approaching Jesus, there is no condition. There is no need of any appointment. I can approach my Jesus anytime. Even if I don't have money, even if I don't have education, even if I don't have strength in me, even if I have sins in my life, still I can approach my Jesus because I know he will not look into my sin when I come to him. I know my Jesus will not count those sins that I have done when I come to him. Look at the prodigal son. He came back. The father did not say, you have sinned, go away. No, he did not say that. Even when he saw from far, the father ran to his young one, let's say his boy, and he kissed, uh, embraced him, kissed him. That's what he did. Not uh, uh, telling, you just go away. You used all my uh, property, money, what, what, what. He used everything, you know. He did not say even such words. Rather, the father told his servants, come, bring uh, good sandals, a ring, what all things. And we'd let us celebrate. That is the nature of Jesus. Once you find Jesus as father, you will feel that, you know, you can approach him any time. Even if you don't have anything, even if you are just a simple person, Jesus tells you, come to me. You don't need anything to come to me. Even if you are a sinner, you come. Hallelujah. 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 If Jesus, if God is our father, we are children. Word of God is very clear in Romans chapter 8. Word of God 17. If we are children, then we are heirs of God. Heirs of co-heirs together with Jesus Christ. Say hallelujah. If we are children, no, yes, if we are children, then um, we are heirs of God. Hallelujah. Co-heirs of Jesus Christ. That means I can approach my God anytime, anytime. So what is needed? Throw your ego. Don't feel that you are someone. Jesus is greater than me, greater than you. Every one of us, throw your ego, throw your, let's say, angry, anger, throw your hatredness, throw your jealousy. You come, removing these things, you come to me. Once we are having angry, hatredness, ego, now we feel a kind of gap, distance between people, even with my God. Is it? Am I not right? When we feel that I'm somebody, to go to another person, I feel, I look at his position. I look at that person, whether he is equal to me in position or higher than me. But for Jesus, no. No. If we are children, we are heirs of God. Let us throw our ego. Let us go to Jesus. Throw your fear. Throw your sorrows. Throw your, what all things that bring pains in your life. Brokenness. Throw them. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. So when you feel that it is, uh, God is my father. Third thing come back to the story come back to the story the friend who came at night so the one who ran to another friend's life I mean a home he had nothing to give him isn't it that is why he went to his friend am I right am I right he had nothing to give that is why he went to his friend asked lent me three loaves why? You know, what do you mean by nothingness? What is the, that is very important to understand. What is the meaning of nothingness in my life? Let me ask you, 
even after coming five times or 10 times here have you seen what all things that you have prayed god has fulfilled has god fulfilled everything that you prayed everything everything are you sure are you sure i don't think i don't think so of course you might you might you might have been blessed in certain areas then you again felt let me also go and ask for something else sure but i don't think that what all things that you asked from god that you have received from here there are people among us there are people among us um they see i did not get but let me also try once more let me go once more i may get there are people like that coming others as you have told they have already received many blessings that is why you are still coming so here this is the first time this friend is going to his friends home and asking lend me three loaves before that he has never gone the first time he is going it is a kind of test it's a kind of test god gives us you may be coming for the first time may not be your prayer is hard it's not must that your prayer must be hard hallelujah hallelujah don't be surprised so many things are there you might have been praying for years and years now still you will have the same sorrow you might be saying why jesus i have been praying for this thing how many years years and years still the same sorrow is there why don't you remove why didn't you remove others they care, they thank god jesus thank you i just came once and you removed my pain others they say jesus i have been here 10 times still my pain is there hallelujah it is a kind of test hallelujah when tests come jesus is reminding perseverance is needed persistence or let's say continuously you ask that is the meaning of it continuously you ask don't be don't be surprised or um you know from inside one who was sleeping inside what did he say let us say um i went to my friend house i asked at midnight so he gave me excuses there are so many excuses here this friend gives what is the first excuse he gives don't disturb me hallelujah hallelujah second excuse the friend says to the one who is outside there from inside the other one is saying uh i have already closed the door hey is it an excuse my children are with me so what so what let them sleep don't disturb them you know even at night you go to washroom are you disturbing your children when you go to washroom no hallelujah hallelujah the first excuse i have closed the door second one i am with my children third one third one i am on my second one was i am on my bed okay i understand that you are on your bed so these are simple excuses from inside which means when we pray before the lord the first time when you pray sometimes your prayer may not be heard which means god has already heard your prayer god has already heard your prayer but he will not give so much attention to that prayer god wants you to pray again that is why he gave it an excuse to his friend you ask me again hallelujah i hope you understand me you ask me again that was the intention of the one who was inside actually this story was written by jesus who is inside jesus is himself inside and one who prays before uh, uh, outside it is me or you 
when we ask for something jesus gives different excuses in his life i am on my way or i am doing something i cannot open the door these are simple excuses jesus gives so that you will ask again and again god wants you to ask again and again are we together so you have to ask sometimes you have to ask for special gift years monica saint monica how many years she asked there is another good example in the bible a sodom gomorrah when god wanted to when god wanted to destroy sodom and gomorrah god told abraham i'm going to i am going to destroy sodom and gomorrah why did he say to abraham that he is going to destroy sodom and gomorrah he could have just destroyed it all on a sudden why did he say to abraham he could have destroyed it isn't it why did he say to abraham god thought if i say to abraham there could be someone praying for these nations so that i can remove the my punishment as god was happy about in a way when people fasted when he sat in ash when they recognized their sinners they did something so jesus god expected same from people of uh, sodom and gomorrah if i say to abraham he may tell those people and if i find some of them that is why abraham asked if you find 50 50 people just people if you find they are will you kill them what did god say no i will not then again abraham so there are no 50 people then again abraham is asking what about 40 it's a kind of auction now auction or when you go to just like as you we go to uh, buy something uh, maybe you might have some shops maybe you yourself might have some shops when customers come they used to ask can you reduce some money for us he started with 50 came 40 30 20 10 at least 10 people if they are there will you destroy them god told no i will not destroy. this is what god wanted ask many times ask many times you may not find result in the beginning of your prayer life but by the end when you continue to ask you will see it hallelujah 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 by the end jesus what does he say what does he say in the story not because he is my friend that i gave him because one who was inside gave him bread only because of his persistent asking request hallelujah persistency asking many times to the lord this is needed in our life hallelujah hallelujah so how do we need ask you will get search search you will find knock shall be open for you how to ask how are you going to ask this is very important every day not one time many times ask many times search many times not one time you may not find result in your prayer life when you search for one time god may not give you god want god wants you to ask many times some intentions he fulfills very fast even without asking he he does for you but there are intentions in your life you need to ask years and years years and years don't be tired ask many times search many times and knock not one time many times god will open for you will god open for you god will definitely open for your intentions if you knock many times hallelujah how much you need to ask i have told how many times many times how much you need to ask until you get how much you are going to search until you find it how much you are going to knock until it is open hallelujah hallelujah 
that is what prayer life is until you get it ask if it is not to if it is not this friday next friday you will get it if it is not next friday the other friday you will get it hallelujah hallelujah knock until you get it until you get it hallelujah then the final sentence of that story with that one i'm finishing what was the final sentence of that story if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask i asked for some gifts from the lord i asked for healing this week god did not give me La, next week i do not know i have been praying here for years i'm not at healed but still i am asking until god heals me i will ask together with asking healing god is saying you are not only getting healing but the one who heals you will be given to you hallelujah are we together who gives you healing holy spirit jesus god let us say uh, god is the one god is the one who heals us holy spirit you will be given even holy spirit when you ask for something not only that something that you ask you will get something else together with that special gift you will get what the one who is giving you he himself will be given to you hallelujah so ask you will get not only what you ask but the one who gives he will be given to you that is what that that uh, let's say that process is called prayer asking jesus until you get when you get you not only get the gift that you have asked but you get the giver also hallelujah the giver and the gift two things you will get when you pray hallelujah futse uso abana haunae kwa siri atakujibu kwa wazii